those of us who have been collecting toy lines for a long time and suddenly those toy lines end, well, we often ask, can they just come out with more and start making the toy line again? And a lot of it has to do with whether or not the tooling exists. A line like Masters of the Universe Classics had a lot of shared tooling, but because it was used so much, we actually had to retool the basic He-Man body three times during the course of the line. And the reason is, is because tooling doesn't last forever. The more you use tooling, the more it gets used up, and it doesn't last forever. Let's dive in and do a little toy info. So this is an inject, I'm sorry, this is an injected molding machine. Sorry, the last one was in Chinese, and you probably don't speak Chinese, unless of course you do, in which case it doesn't matter. The point is, an injection molding machine gets a tool inserted into it, and hot liquid plastic is injected into it, and that's what makes plastic objects. Whether it's a non-articulated object, like a pawn here, or a fully articulated action figure that needs lots of pieces assembled, each piece individually has to be made in an injection molded machine. The mold is then broken in two, the piece is removed, and assembly begins. And you'll notice that anything made of plastic has sort of a long tube coming to the outside. This is where the plastic is injected, and this piece is broken off. And as I noted, molding can expire. Not the way food expires in your you know, refrigerator or medicine can expire in your medicine cabinet. It's not like there's an exact date stamped on it. It has to do with a lot of factors. And it's not, maybe expire isn't quite the right word, but more wear out, like an old pair of shoes or, you know, a former lover. Things get worn out in life, and the more tooling is used, the more it deteriorates and isn't, well, usable is not the right word, but the details aren't as prominent. And especially when you're doing something like an action figure, you're going to get things like, like warping and burning and all sorts of kind of strange things that start happening to the shape of the toy. Yeah, the tool exists because it's very large and it's made of metal. And the reason it's made of metal is because it has to take that hot injected plastic. But things like flashes and sparks and burn marks and sink marks when the plastic is kind of pressing in on itself all start to happen the more and more tooling is used. The item that's going to come out of the tooling looks less and less like the object you're trying to make the longer you use the same tool, which is why in a long toy line life like Masters of the Universe Classics, we had to recreate the basic body, the male buck that was used for He-Man and Man-at-Arms and, you know, all those characters three times, multiple times throughout the life of the line because the tooling wore out because it was used so much. And it adds to the overall cost of a line. So when you're trying to avoid injection molding defects, not only do you have to think about what type of material you're going to be injecting into the mold, but what type of material you're going to make the mold out of. There's multiple different types of material, and the different class of tooling that you use has a direct correlation to how many times you can use said tool. So, when you're creating a giant piece of metal that has a specific shape carved out of it, it obviously has to stand up to a huge amount of hot fire and plastic. So the five different classes, coincidentally called class 101 through 105, have very specific number of times they can be used. Then there's factors that affect this. So for example, there's standard, standard excuse me, operating con conditions. Meaning, you know, what is the factory like? Does the factory, is it next to an ocean? Does it have salt water that's, you know, breezing in? It depends on the run. Are you doing a small amount? Are you, you know, pumping out 5,000 units? Or are you pumping out 500,000 units? There's also things like cycle time, which is the amount of time between using the tool and the tool being rested or the machine being rested. Lead time and cycle time are directly related based on how often you need to actually inject the plastic into the mold. And then, of course, there's the type of material that's being injected. For most toys, you're dealing with plastic, which is either ABS or PCP, different types of plastic that has different flexibility. Capes are usually made out of PCP. And then, of course, you have things like movie lines that sometimes have such a huge number of production units that are needed in order to set for retail that they'll often get what's called double tooling, which means that a character 
that you know you'll be able to run, you know, X number of units per day, per week, but you that's not going to allow you to hit the number you need to ship for a movie launch. You may actually have to tool a figure twice so that you can run two different machines at the same time in order to meet your sales quota. And this happens a lot with major blockbusters like Avengers movies or what used to be Star Wars movies when they had huge toy lines. So you don't necessarily always just tool a figure once. You can sometimes have to tool it multiple times. And you can change a tool. So I've used this example before since this is one I worked on. When we did Stargirl for the Justice League Unlimited line at Mattel, we wanted to use an existing tool, an existing buck body, in order to cut down on overhead cost. And that was going to be Supergirl, because they both had the teenage girl basic body. But Supergirl had an S-shield that was actually sort of chiseled into her chest. It wasn't, you know, just a sticker. It, it actually had what's called scribe lines, which means it's, it's part of the tool. You can actually see it on the figure, even without paint. So to remove that, we had to modify the tool. And it's one of those things where you can only go in one direction. Once you modify a tool, forever will it dominate your destiny. And you can't unmodify it, if you will. Well, I guess you could, but it's going to be even more costly. So every time you modify it, you're basically getting in there and you're actually making changes to the metal mold. And you know, instead of working in Play-Doh or clay, which is very easy to mold, you're dealing with metal, basically. So you have to have a skilled artisan who goes in there and actually changes how the mold is or you know, the other things you make an entirely different tool. The last thing is storage. So tools, as I said, they're very big, they're very expensive. So what do you do with them after you're done? Some tools are kept. Some are put on shelves, some are put in warehouses, like at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. But it's very expensive to store tools because they're heavy and they're large. So they need, you know, a certain type of shelf that's actually going to hold them up and not break under their weight. And storing tools is a whole other industry. And most companies won't store tools long term. And sometimes it's more cost effective to remake a tool. Like when you do commemorative lines, like the Star Wars Retro series or the Masters of the Universe uh, commemorative collection from 1999. Those were brand new tools. Those aren't the old tools getting reused. And then when they're done storing it and using it and the tool's not usable, honestly, most of them wind up going out to Hong Kong Harbor and winding up as anchors for boats because they make great anchors. They're big, heavy objects, and people are looking to get rid of them because they take up space. Your average tool is going to last one to five years. Not necessarily no more, no less. As I said, there's so many factors. But if you're going to go back into production on something that used to be really popular and you want to bring it back, well, it probably means you're going to have to tool that all over again. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. What about examples like the Power of the Force 2 Millennium Falcon, right? I mean, that came out 10 years after the original line went off the market. How in the world did the tool last so long? And this is one of those kind of weird exceptions, but not really an exception as much as a creative solution. So while the Kenner toy that came out in the 80s obviously had a tool, and it may have even been double tool because they were sure producing a lot of Millennium Falcons in the 80s. It was a bestseller. I'm willing to bet it had multiple tools. And one of those wound up at, the, at Palatoy, which was the international distributor and manufacturer for Kenner's product. And the new Millennium Falcon used a Palatoy mold, which came out later in the 80s. And then, unfortunately, the mold was dropped on the floor and shattered into pieces. True story. The one thing you say about the Falcon. Don't worry. Get all together. So afterwards, that is a big reason why the new Millennium Falcon was created by Hasbro, because once the old mold was broken, they could either recreate the old one for all that tooling or just make a new one. And it made sense if you were going to invest all that money to just invest in something all new, then try to recreate it all over again. And that is why tooling does not last forever, and why if you want to bring a toy line back, you really need to think about reinvesting in new tooling. The old tooling is, you know, it's kind of like a luxury car. It's extremely expensive. And it's not as simple as just getting in and taking off again. The keys are in the ignition, Your Highness. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and a look at the lifespan of tooling and why it doesn't last as long as we think. It's an interesting part of the toy business. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and I always comment back. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.